The market cannot bully the American people. They're going to eventually get caught. But the government can bully American yes. people. That's exactly what they're doing today. They're bullying American people. And so although you're right, we're a person on the free market side because they're getting paid for the work that they're doing, you know, they may be like, well, if you give me $500,000, I'll give you the information. If you give me a million dollars, but we know a lot of government agency people have done that as well and, you know, sold their soul. To, I can tell you stories. There's plenty of articles of different names. You know them. I know them. We've read about them. So, but my, my bigger concern is free enterprise cannot take my freedoms away, but uh, the government can't take my freedoms away and bully me. And uh, a lot of times what they do is they use, you know, a, like Andrew Tate, this guy, mm. never met him, never talked to him. We're probably going to do podcasts together eventually. But uh, he said some stuff I agree with, and I love the fact that he's pushing the envelope. All of a sudden, hey, let's silence this guy. Okay, Why? Because uh, he's got a case going on with uh, women and all this other stuff. Okay, there is criminal activities that you have to, you know, be held accountable for. And then there is banning because he's saying some stuff you disagree with. On the criminal side, if I break the law, yes, I have to go to court. And if I'm doing time, I'm doing time. Big difference. I don't know what he's done. If he's done crime, hey, that's the level of accountability. But banning somebody for things you disagree with, O.J. Simpson is on Twitter. You know, the, the Khamenei is on Twitter. Putin, who just killed a bunch of people, he's on Twitter. He ain't banned. How come they're not banned? You're afraid of what this guy's going to be doing? So that's the part where I wonder if government gets involved and in saying that guy's been a little too loud, shut this guy up. And I, I, free market can bully by saying we don't want your customer. It's simple. Facebook can say that. Twitter can say that. Instagram can say that. But are they saying it because they're saying it like this whole story going into Facebook where you know he sits with uh, Rogan. Uh, 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 and Zuck did? yeah, Zuck sits with Rogan and they go through a bunch of different stories. And, uh, you know, here's a story from Fox business FBI response to Zuckerberg's claim on Rogan that Facebook limited Hunter Biden's story, uh, after agency's warning An appearance by Mark Zuckerberg on Joe Rogan podcast last week, stoked controversy after Meta CEO admitted that Facebook limited the bombshell Hunter Biden laptop story ahead of the 2020 election because the FBI had warned about. Russian propaganda after the release of the episode on Thursday, the FBI said it routinely notifies U.S. private sector entities, including social media providers, of potential threat information so that they can decide how to better defend against threats. The agency said it has provided companies with foreign threat indicators to help them protect their platforms and customers from abuse by foreign malign influencer influence actors. Okay, you read this. I can take this in a couple different ways. One way I take this is Zuck did this intentionally because he's like, I'm so sick of you guys targeting me. Leave me alone, okay? I have two customers, the left, the right. I have to kind of deal with both of you guys, and both of you guys hate the other side. I get it, but let me do my job. So maybe he said this publicly intentionally to get under uh, FBI's uh, skin and kind of have them be exposed a little bit, maybe. 10%, I believe it was intentional. Did he do it accidentally? He's too smart to do it accidentally. Like, was Joe really cornering him and pressuring him? Mm -hmm. You better tell me or else, and you know, here's... No, it was just a basic conversation where he came out. Could it be accidental? But when somebody says something like this, this, this just keeps hurting more and more and more. So the FBI bullied the American people through cornering a free enterprise company that made them silence because they didn't have the intel that the FBI claimed they had and they couldn't verify it through a private agency that's a competitor to FBI that they had to kind of take that position. And because of that, we have the greatest motivational speaker of all time as our president, Joe Biden, right? So it's a kind of like a very weird situation that takes place here. Yeah, so what you're, I think that there's a couple things that we want to keep in mind. We want to keep in mind the context of the situation. So if you recall 2016, first of all, let's be, let's be very honest with each other. Russian meddling in the U.S. elections did not start in 2016. Every election cycle ever has had people trying to meddle in the election. What happened is that in 2016, social media got caught. That's what happened in 16. Before then, we could all kind of pretend it wasn't there. It's, mm -hmm. like, the, it's like that uncle in our family that we don't want to talk about because they're kind of, maybe they, they're a criminal or maybe they went to jail or who knows what they did, but we don't really, we, we don't want to, we don't want to, be the one who calls the police and turns the uncle in, but we also don't want to be the person who admits that we know the uncle or that the uncle's in our family, right? That's exactly what happens with espionage almost all the time. People don't want to admit that it's there, but it's happening all the time. It's that ugly wart on your butt you don't want anybody to know about, right? What happened in 16 is everybody saw the wart. 
espionage became a, a household word. Influence campaigns, covert influence became household conversation. In 2020, everyone was expecting it to happen again. Trump was back, back in the race. Russia was still involved. All the 16 investigations came to fruition in 18. And you had CIA basically telling us that they couldn't trust the president and the president saying that he didn't trust CIA. And it was a disaster. It was a total mess. The social media companies did not want to get stuck in the middle of being accused in the future of being willing uh, voices for propaganda from Russian meddling or Chinese meddling or Iranian meddling, all of which happens. Saudi meddling happens, right? Nobody wants to, nobody wants to be on the X for that. So the more cautious approach is to just shut it down. If FBI calls you and says, hey, this is Russian meddling, we think this is Russian meddling, what does, what does Zuck have to lose by being overly cautious and just doing what they tell him to do? To a certain extent, you're right. He's saying, just leave me alone, guys. Let me do what I do. I'm not a political mouthpiece. I'm just a social media channel. But I'm also a business owner, and the practical solution here is if the FBI tells me that, that I might be being abused by the Russians, I don't want the Russians to abuse my platform, so I'm just going to shut it down. Two years later, we have the benefit of time now. Now we can look back and look at all the information. He had limited information in a short period of time. I actually am really proud of Zuckerberg for saying it publicly, like, hey. I agree. I had to shut it down, guys. It doesn't mean that FBI is bullying me. It means I took the more conservative decision, and maybe that was the wrong decision. But by the way, that's publicly standing up to FBI. Correct. And then that's, he ha we all, as American yeah. citizens, we have the right to stand up to our own government. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.